Bitcoin creeps steadily up and up and up while all coins take a massive dive after news that Binance will restrict trading to U.S. based customers. Lobbying grows amongst our government personnel for cryptocurrency, showing that the space is evolving. And we're going to break down how the market goes. All this and more in today's exciting episode of Breaking Bitcoin Market Update. Hey guys, hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Thank you for joining me for another exciting episode of Breaking Bitcoin Market Update. Of course, I'm your host, Justin Wise, lead analyst and senior mentor at CrackingCryptocurrency.com. Today's episode is brought to you live Friday, June 14th, 2019, only on Cracking Cryptocurrency, streaming live across YouTube, Twitch, DLive, Facebook Live, and of course, on Roku at the Investors News Channel. All right, guys, your daily source for market updates, sentiment, and news for professional traders. This episode of Breaking Bitcoin is brought to you by us. If you are new to trading or an experienced trader looking for something better and you want a system that works in all market conditions, be sure to head over to the premium info page at premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com and see all that we have to offer. The Pathways to Profit strategy building course designed to teach you how to construct your own trading system, proprietary indicators and strategies, custom spreadsheets and tools, educational content in audio and video form covering topics from technical strategy to risk management to psychology and lifestyle, in addition to reliable setups from a team of analysts and our private Discord community. Be sure to sign up, push your skills to the next level today. For all that and more, head over to premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com. That's premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com. First off, an update on the premium trading group. So the next lesson of the current module, which is automating our backtesting in TradingView's Pine Strategy Tester, is all done. I just finished editing the video. So I'm going to publish that after the end of today's live stream. In that lesson, we're going to cover how to set up a basic Pine, uh, excuse me, a basic Pine strategy tester, how to write our functions for take profit and stop loss, how to write our initiator code or our indicator code, how to actually write that into a strategy tester that works and how to bypass the common problems that individuals have, even complicated problems that individuals have in writing Pine strategy testers. Many people who are new to trading jump into the Pine strategy tester and they they don't set it up right. They don't really understand how the code works, what Pine really does in the back end, and often they get very skewed results. So there's, you know, I, and I get this all the time because there's just very, very few people who understand how to use Pine strategy tester correctly. So it's just one of those things where no matter uh, I, I talk about my pine results all the time and everybody says, well, did you take this into account or that into account or this? Y yes, I did. Yes. Cause I've been using pine strategy tester for a very, very long time. And I'm very, uh, it, it comes from not having a background in programming. Pine is the only programming language that I'm proficient in. And it's weird cause it's a proprietary, uh, language operating language of trading view itself. Anyways, um, so that is all covered in the module. And then I also teach how you can go and take every single public script, any code that you can find and plug it into your own strategy tester that we build from the ground up and learn how to write your own strategies based off that. So it's not a huge, I tell you exactly what to look for. You can look at any other code that's out there and plug that into your strategy tester and figure out how to plot a strategy for any code that you can find. And later on in the later modules, we'll get more and more and more advanced with Pine Strategy Tester and start breaking down more complicated topics. All right. Uh, we'll also be finishing up the, again, the updates to the concierge bot are done. So now you can subscribe to notifications from your analyst of choice, whether that's DaVinci, uh, whether that's Alex, whether that's myself, any of the providers who are going to be providing signals and setups, you guys can do that in the premium bot spam channel. Haven't updated the onboarding documentation yet for the newer members, but all the information is posted. You guys can do that now. Okay. Another quality of life update. I uh, want to run remind you guys uh, that our group is having actually all members of our Discord are having a trading competition over on Bybit. They were happy enough to do that for us. So uh, if you guys use our Bybit referral link down in the description below, or you go and sign up for Bybit at bybit.crackingcryptocurrency.com, that's bybit.crackingcryptocurrency.com. You can register, get a hold of me in the Discord, and send your UID to me. That's your user ID on Bybit. You can find it in your settings, and you can participate in the trading competition. So if you want more information on that, you guys can check out the Discord or again, use the link in the description. 
I want to thank our current Discord Nitro boosters. You guys are doing absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for that. We've gotten a couple more Discord Nitro boosters. We need three more, I think, at the current time right now to unlock the next level of our Discord server. That allows us to have enhanced audio clarity, more file sharing size, and of course, as always, for you guys, more emojis. Those are always the funnest and most popular thing. So uh, huge shout out to the current Discord Nitro boosters, especially Alex, Der Crypto Meister, and all the latest ones as well. Thank you guys so much. I highly appreciate you guys helping out the Discord server. And if you guys would like to help out and you have Discord Nitro, you can boost our server. Okay, uh, let's see here. I uh, want to remind you guys that I won't be here tomorrow or Sunday. I'm going on vacation. I'm taking my kids down to Six Flags. It is the annual we're out of school. Oh, that wasn't good. I just turned off on a white balance and uh, my face looks super weird. Sorry about that. Let's turn on, let's turn auto white balance back on. <sighs> Always fun to have that happen. Anyways, guys, you can see how Binance is stressing me out so much right now. It's really not. Um, so anyways, I'll be on vacation, so I won't be here Saturday or Sunday, so there won't be any live streams. I'll be back Monday, and I know the trading group is going to be in good hands while I'm gone as well. And I want to give a big shout out to yesterday's YouTube comment winner, which was Steve C. So, of course, we'll start off every day like we do, picking a random comment winner and gifting them some crypto. So, Steve C., you haven't gotten a hold of me in the Discord yet. Get a hold of me in the Discord, and I will tip you some crypto, man. He's turned back. He's turning back into a ghost. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> this man is not you. <laughs> you guys saw the truth behind the veil. Uh, that's what happens when you have Chroma Key on. So let's start off today's show as we always do. And let me actually, real quick, I guess I didn't have this part set up. I'm going to pull open yesterday's YouTube comment, nothing inside. <laughs> oh, fun times. Let's get over into the main scene. All right, so here we are on the live scene. And you know what? That would probably be fixed if I did the light better. So I think that's probably the issue. One second, guys. There. There we go. Got to bring the light closer to me. That's what it is. All right. I was hoping that those... <laughs> I was hoping that those... Uh, that the way that I redid the lights would uh, would be fine. I reset my studio up a little bit last night. And it's... Uh, Working 90% better, but that 10%, a little tricky. So anyways, here we are on the live scene. Let's just talk about this real quick. Litecoin taking a dive, Ethereum taking a little bit of a push down, uh, Bitcoin Cash taking a little bit of a push down, but I actually like the way that Bitcoin Cash looks right now, holding above the baseline, looking for some continuation on that. And Bitcoin just slowly creeping steadily along on 83.75 on Bitfinex, 83.82 over on Coinbase Pro. And uh, whoa, it's over 9,000. Oh, that's the South Korean one. All right, never mind. Anyways, moving forward, guys. Let's go on over to our random comment picker and choose video. And... All right, here was the video for yesterday. We'll plug this in. Of course, you guys know how this works. If you comment on today's video, then you have a chance to win some free crypto. We'll load comments. And we have 15 unique users found. Let's randomly pick a winner. Dun, 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 dun. It's B Pazger. All right, thank you so much. For the comment on the video, man, he says, wonder what will happen with Binance banning U.S. customers. Well, you're seeing it right now today. You're seeing the effect of that right now. So B. Pazger, thank you so much for the comment. And if you want to get a hold of me in the Discord, you can just DM me at JustinWise5696. I'm in the Discord server at the top right-hand corner. I'm hard to miss. And I will gift you some crypto, man. Thank you so much. Okay. Let's go over to Crypto Bubbles and get a scene of the live scene. Oh, my good Lord. It's like D-Day. Link up 30%, but coming back down. Hypercash 17.9, Nexus 10.4, and everything else just pretty much pulling back pretty hard. Even our beloved BNB coin down 8.2%, Walton Chain down pretty significantly, ICX, Strat, big losers of the day, man. So pretty rough day. And I want to point this out because this is exactly what I said this morning in the members lounge, uh, excuse me, in the, in the premium signals channel. And that is, you know, it's never pleasant, especially if you had altcoin positions, like I had altcoin positions last night, and some of them aren't doing so hot right now. But one of the nice things about the way that we trade anyway is the way that we position size appropriately. Money management is tied into, into my trading system. So even in a situation where we basically traded into a high news event and we have an unfortunate adverse reaction from the market, it's absolutely fine. It's absolutely fine. There are a lot of traders, unfortunately, today 
who lost their shirts. And it's not like it's not like this is absolutely apocalyptic. We've seen much, much worse. It's not like we're having huge 40% gouges. Think most things are down about anywhere from five to 10%. That's never pleasant though. And for lots of individuals out there who aren't position sizing properly, who haven't gone through the course, or even if they haven't gone through the course, who just don't have a systematic trading structure, they are very unhappy today and they've lost significantly. Meanwhile, overall for the month of June, I am significantly up in net profit, even if I close out every single trade that I have open right now at a, at a loss, whether it's uh, my normal position size loss or whether it's an early exit, right? So there's probably going to be quite a few trades that I ent exit out of tonight at an early exit, so at a loss, and that's fine. I might clear out my entire trading positions tonight. Uh, most of them, or excuse me, I'd say some of them at losses. Some of them are winners. Some of them are already locked in. Some hit their stop loss and profit. Some, I had one trade already hit its stop loss in loss. That was this morning. That was BNB. And, and that's, that's fine. That's comfortable. It's comfortable to sit here. And that's the way that I trade guys. You know, it doesn't really matter what happens in the market. I know that at the end of the month or at the end of the year, I'll have more money than I started with. And if I don't, then I know that I need to make adjustments to my strategy, but it's something that's worked for me for years. So there's no reason to change anything right now. And position sizing properly and looking at your trading as a systemic thing to do as a, as a systematic activity over time is the proper approach to trading. Most individuals fail because they put they take on too much risk and they do not diversify their trades. They only take one trade, they only take a few trades, they don't take a, a, a basket of trades, they don't look at how certain trades can average themselves out. And most traders believe that because of their analysis, there is a greater probability of this trade, any one trade, hitting the stop loss or hitting the take profit before the stop loss. And there's nothing you can do. The market is by nature random in the way that it distributes wins and losses. What it is not random is, what it, what it generally is not random towards is a strategy that is applied consistently over time. The results of any one trade, completely random. You never know when you enter into a trade whether you're going to hit your profit target or your stop loss first. It is up to the fates. What you are in control of is how over all your trades, you enter and exit position size, set your take profit and your stop loss and how you manage the trade. That is what you can control. You can't control the market. You can control your actions in the market. So if one trade or several trades are blowing your account out or significantly adversely affecting your account, it has nothing to do with your entry and exit. It has everything to do with your system and it has everything to do with your position sizing generally. That's why in PTP, we focus on position sizing, money management and psychology above technical strategy. We build the technical strategy strategy, and then we teach you how to properly use it. So let's get over in the live scene and we'll focus on Bitcoin. Going over to Bitstamp on the daily, let's see what we got here. Now, we did get a long signal yesterday that was not confirmed by Wada Atar. Even with the sped up settings, I'm still going to be using the sped up settings for display purposes on the stream. Keeping sensitivity the same, fast length is 12, slow length is 26, channel length is 20, multiplier is 2. I don't color bars because I find that distracting. Uh, even with Minx, uh, let's turn off... Uh, Never mind. So let's get rid of Quadrigo ATR here for a second as well. And what do we see? Obviously, Bitcoin crossed and closed above our daily baseline back here on the 11th of June, 2019. That is a signal to exit the 1x short, to be flat in Bitcoin right now, to be out of my full risk short position. So everything is good. And overall, here's what's interesting as well. Not only are my trades up in net profitability over time, right? Not only are my trades up in net profitability over time, over the course of June, uh, because as I said earlier, even if I were to close every single trade out right now that I have on at a loss, uh, I'm currently up. So let's, if I look at my spreadsheet right now, if actually you guys can go to current results or yeah, current results .com. Let's just do it right here. Okay. So week one, I was in net loss. Week one was net loss, right? I put on quite a few trades and ended up losing more than I won week one. Uh, week two, and you can see, this is this is how I trade. And this is, most people just can't fathom this. If you actually look, you know, I'm, I'm right about 60% of the time. Uh, on, on good weeks, it's 70% of the time. But as you can see, I have a fairly equal distribution of wins and losses. But what I don't have a fairly equal distribution on is profitability, is how much I'm actually pulling back from the market on the trades that win, and how little I'm giving up to the market in losses on my losing trades. And that is what you'll learn with a good strategy. That's what you'll learn with a good system. And this is how professional traders like myself trade the market. We don't care about any one individual trade. We care about the preponderance of trades that we take over time. We look to maximize our gains and reduce our losses, because any good trading strategy is going to have both. 
Uh, when you see unrealistic spreadsheets that generally don't look like this, they're not from individuals who are real traders. Even if they are real traders, they're generally not people who can produce consistent results year after year after year after year after year, like I do, like we do. So uh, that's my point. Even if I close out every single trade that I have open right now in a loss, it will not detract from this very significantly. I'll still be up in net profit. And I don't do my um, ROI. I'm actually, uh, my ROI, actual equity return on equity is less than that. Uh, but uh, I generally do my ROI calculations at the end of the month because then I have all the data in front of me. As I said, uh, last month, I was up maybe with 29 or 32%, I thought, by the by the middle of week three for the month of May. And then when I actually closed the month of May out, I had returned 46.6% of my equity, right? So whatever, however much cash, USD, I had at the beginning of May, I had 46.6% more at the end of May. Okay, so let's go back over to Bitcoin and let's talk about what's going on. So uh, the reason though why I brought that up is because uh, when we're below the baseline, we want to be in a 1x short and be protecting the USD value of our capital. Now that we're above the baseline, we're in a 1x long just by holding Bitcoin. And this, uh, you can maximize what margin you want. You can choose what margin you want to maximize, your BTC value or your USD value, or you can try to do both. Me as a trader, I'm concerned with maximizing my USD value, not my BTC value, because if I lose BTC and gain USD, then that's okay. The BTC that I do have is more valuable uh, now that, or when I have it, whenever I, whenever I finish the position out. So uh, throughout all of this, one thing that is buoying over the last couple of days, well, excuse me, yesterday and the day and currently today, uh, is the fact that I'm in the 1x long. Now, if we close back down below the baseline, I'll protect myself again by going into a 1x short. It is what it is. Now, uh, we do have Wada Atar rising above the explosion level today. So today may be qualifying along. It's not a position that I'm going to take. I'll tell you why. Because I am going on vacation. So everybody in the group is empowered with exactly how to trade PTP, Minx's Wada Atar strategy, uh, com combined, blah, combined with Quadrigo ATR and knows exactly what to do. So you guys are absolutely fine. You're in good hands as well. You'll have Alex. You'll have DaVinci taking care of you while I'm gone. And I'll be back Sunday evening, Monday morning. So I won't be putting on any new positions tonight uh, because I don't want to have, I don't want to be on vacation and having to check my phone all the time. That's just not really how I want to put on trades. Could I trade that way? Absolutely. Could I peel away an hour a day to actually put my trades on while I'm on vacation with my kids? Yes, I could. But if I'm only spending two days with my kids and I'm only dedicating, you know, one weekend to them when they already kind of deal with quite a lot uh, with me, because I work pretty hard. I work a lot of hours. Um, I kind of want to give that time to them. So anyways, that's where I'm sitting as far as that goes. So at the close of today's candle, we might get a confirmed long signal. We'll see how that looks actually at the daily candle close. If we go down through the lower time frames, as you can see, we did get a confirmed 12 hour long back here on the 11th of June at 1900. That's the daily candle close. Uh, back at eight, uh, got a long signal that was a loser on the eight hour chart. Uh, but then we got some continuation longs. In fact, we just got another continuation long on the close of the previous eight hour candle, which closed at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, the current eight hour candle is going to be closing later on. Um, so let's take a gander at, or excuse me, at, uh, yeah, yeah, my bad, my bad, central daylight time. So um, continuation long that was given on at 11 o'clock would have actually done pretty well. We're, I'm pretty sure we would have hit a take profit on that. Let's take a gander. Continuation long right here. Yep, we would have had our first take profit, and that would still be a profitable position where we're taking that trade or trading on the six-hour chart. I know a lot of people do uh, because when I do delve down to lower time frames, the meso frames that I like to trade are going to be the eight and the three. Uh, six hour gave us a continuation long here and is currently giving us another continuation long on the current candle and the four hour gave us a four hour long on the previous candle and right here as well. This one would have been pretty good. Take profit one so far, still waiting on take profit two. And again, current entry on the last four hour candle. So going over to the daily time frame, typically the same kind of concepts that we take from Forex or equity, we want to take into cryptocurrency as well. We want to be careful trading in the high news events. Now, over the next few days, there's going to be opportunities, but we don't want to underestimate the effect that Binance, and we're going to talk about that here in just a second, but we'll deal with the technicals first, and then we'll go into the fundamentals. Um, we don't want to underestimate the effect that this might have on individuals holding their positions open. I would not be surprised to see some pretty significant exit pumps on coins as U.S. investors exit ICOs that they had purchased. You, you just don't know what market participants will do. 
market participants are humans and humans are irrational by nature. So people ba act based upon their emotions, their feelings at a time. And you know as well, how many times have you exited a position that later pumped and then you felt stupid? Or how many times have you held on to a position and then it dumped and you felt stupid? Uh, you shouldn't feel stupid because that's not the point. The point is human beings do things that are not systemic or systematic in nature. That's why I trade differently, why I trade mechanically with a with a structure that I know works. And I only trade from that on that structure and I do not deviate from that structure, lest I fall into the problems that most other traders make. Um, so because of that, because the majority of market participants are not trading in such a fashion, and because they can largely influence the market through their hurt actions, um, this contributes to the random nature of the market. So we don't exactly know what the technicals, how the technicals will play out. We don't exactly know whether price will move up or price will move down. Again, if I were to speculate, I would speculate that we're going to continue to see negative movements from many altcoins. But I think there's going to be lots of opportunity as well if you're going to be trading more fast paced. So I think we're going to see probably lots of exit pumps on ICO coins. I think we're probably going to see exit pumps on coins that are not going to be listed to US investors. And that is something that you guys can take into account as well. What coins are going to be available to US citizens and what coins are not. And we're going to break that down here in a little bit and tell you exactly what those coins are going to be and where you can elsewhere go. And this all kind of dovetails nicely into what I had already said previously in the show that we were going to be doing for the trading group, which is adding Coinbase Pro pairs. So that's that's been a pretty popular request to add Coinbase Pro pairs. Now, all of a sudden, a pretty popular request in the last 24 hours has been to add Wabi pairs. And that is something that we may be looking into as a group is since Wabi already has HBUS, which it was HBUS, but it's not HBUS anymore. They already have a U.S. registered um, exchange for United States citizens to trade off of. We might be doing moving our... Um, moving our uh, moving the coins that we can't trade on Binance over there. Now, keep in mind, guys, there's no reason to freak out. U.S. customers are not going to have their funds seized by Binance. Uh, you can use a VPN to get around, but then uh, just like we would do with anything else, again, if you want to use the best VPN, there's one down there in the description. Now, one thing is you're going to be able to use a VPN to access Binance, but you're going to be capped at two Bitcoin withdrawal per 24 hours. Now, for most retail traders, it's going to be absolutely fine. That's $16,000 per day that you can withdraw. Not a problem. If you want to trade larger than that, then you're going to have to KYC and you're not going to be able to geoblog. You're not going to be able to VPN around uh, KYC because you're going to have to show the country that you're in. Now, realistically, if you have a Binance account and you KYC'd up and you want to continue to trade on Binance from the United States, you're going to have to create a new account and you're going to have to trade behind a VPN. You don't need to now. You, uh, Binance is going to be open to US customers until September 12th, 2019. I'm pretty sure that's right. I know it's September 2019. I'm pretty sure it's the 12th. We'll look at the date here in just a second. But... At that point in time, they're going to be making a new exchange. Now, they're partnered with BAM, which is registered with FinCEN, so that's all well and good. But we're going to run into the same problems I would expect to see that Coinbase Pro has. However, Coinbase Pro has lower liquidity than Binance by a long shot. However, one thing that we can do is know that trading on Coinbase Pro is safer than trading on Binance. You're going to have a much better time. You're going to have a much easier time. Uh, finally, a class action lawsuit against Coinbase, Coinbase, which is registered in the United States and registered with FinCEN and all these other corporations or, or regulatory agencies, then you're going to be getting away with Binance, which says, hey, we don't care what the United States laws are. If you're trading on, if you're trading on Binance, that's your own fault. So uh, when Binance creates their own United States-based exchange, then it'll probably have the exact same safety and features of Coinbase Pro. But I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of liquidity flow into Coinbase Pro now. So again, that dovetails nicely with the fact that we were going to go trade on Coinbase Pro anyways. So having said that, nothing to do on Bitcoin right now. Potentially uh, a long signal will be generated at the daily candle close. Looking over at Ethereum on Coinbase, let's look at the daily. Excuse me. Now, long signal was generated here on the 11th of June 2019. That was a trade that I didn't take. That was a trade that I didn't take. Um, let's see here. Uh, price pulling back down to the baseline and coming into the proximity of the baseline, having a limit buy at the baseline would not have gotten your order filled. But again, if we look at Quadrigo, we are still within an attractive buy opportunity and we'll be able to see exactly why once Quadrigo loads up. Dun, 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 dun. All right, here we go. Now, uh, what would be your take profit target if you were wanting to take a long on Quadrigo? Again, it's discretionary position sizing at this point in time, or excuse me, not discretionary position sizing, but discretionary entry because you did not enter on your initiation of the signal. And let's take a gander down here. 
So your first take profit level would be one ATR above the baseline. So about 3.9 to 4% above current price would be where your first take profit is. And your stop loss, your hard stop loss would be somewhere in the vicinity of 233.15. So that is going to be putting you below this wick right here and right in the vicinity of these candle body closes right here. So a little bit higher than the previous low. Okay, now you're free to adjust that as you want. But if you adjust your stop loss, you're going to have to adjust your position size because your position size needs to be based off of your risk and your risk needs to be based off of your account size and your risk percentage or the preponderance of trades that you're going to be entering as well. If you're using adjusted position size risk and you don't have access to leverage now on Bybit, where we're going to be trading our Ethereum USD pairs, we do have access to leverage. So that becomes less of an issue because we are going to be taking on full risk trades generally. So when we take trades that where we have on exchanges where we have access to leverage, we are going to be taking on the correct position size because we have access to leverage. And we don't have to lock up the margin necessary to take that trade. And in general, a good practice is, especially with these leveraged exchanges, is to only deposit enough capital to be able to take the correct number of trades. So one of our members had a great solution, which is he deposited enough capital onto Bybit to be able to take two trades at full risk per pair with 10x leverage. So that is a great solution. And then all your excess capital, you can move into cold storage or you can move on to spot exchanges to be able to take other trades at higher risk, not higher risk, but correct risk. Because if you don't have capital on Binance, for example, you're not going to be able to take on the correct position size to generate a asymmetric risk to reward um, profit outcome. Okay, so nothing to do on Ethereum right now. There is the potential to take a reversal long because we've pulled back down to the baseline and are currently trading above the baseline. Should price close down below the baseline, you would be exiting any long. It's not a trade that I'm going to take again for the reasons that I said previously and earlier, but that is what we're looking at right now. Okay, we can go down to lower time frames as well, sorry, here on Ethereum and see what's cooking. All right, so we did get a 12 hour long signal right there. Let's see if that would have been a good trade. Yes, we would hit take profit one, not take profit two. Uh, pulling back, let's actually throw RVGI on as we've been doing. Uh, relative vigor index being our display exit indicator. And the changes that we make are changing this to a lighter color to make it easier to see and speeding it up to eight. So uh, had you entered into that 12 hour long, RVGI would still have you in the trade, whereas Minx, which is a more sensitive stop loss, would have you out at this candle right here, would have had you exiting your position there. And I feel like I'm going to sneeze. That was a that was a good one. Generally, uh, generally, when I say that I'm going to sneeze on stream, it never happens. So um, you know what, I feel like I'm just feel like I'm just too orange, you know? And I think that's because I have that auto white balance on. So we're going to turn it off and go Terminator again here for a second. Shoot. One second. going on guys okay there we go let's try that let's see if that generates the same results yeah okay so I'm gonna have to fix that with the lighting here in a little bit but we'll worry about that later so hopefully you guys can just deal with me being a little flush a little bit of rouge on the cheeks it's okay looking good maybe not exactly how I do it but whatever Okay. Let's go look at our fundamentals after looking at Ethereum here. So on the 12 hour chart, long generated here, take profit one, uh, eight hour generated, same thing for Bitcoin generated an eight hour trade that was a loss. And then you got a continuation long here, which was a win told to exit here. RVGI got you out one candle later, uh, six hour time frame. nothing going on right now. Four hour time frame. We did just get along on the previous candle right here, which had a significant amount of volume as well. So the four hour just closed about an hour and a half ago and did give you a long signal. And the three hour did not tell you anything. 
And hourly gave you a long signal here that was a loss. And giving you a short that you wouldn't take because you're trading against the daily because the daily is above the baseline. So nothing really super exciting. Honestly, there's been some volatility and I think the trade was in Bitcoin, but again, not the trade that I took. And we'll really see how Bitcoin responds to this. But it makes sense that Bitcoin is moving up because Bitcoin, anybody trading in the United States, uh, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin, um, uh, Bitcoin trading into United or, uh, so Bitcoin spot trading is going to be available to individuals in the United States no matter what. So most individuals and in, most individuals who are trading Bitcoin are trading on uh, Bybit, Bitmex, Deribit. They're trading on leveraged exchanges where they can get access to leverage. They're not trading spot generally on Coinbase. That's kind of a bots game. Some people are, but generally individuals who are going to Coinbase Pro in the United States are just interested in moving from fiat to crypto, either for security or for cashing out or for buying more Bitcoin. That's generally what most individuals utilize Coinbase Pro for. Uh, there are not very many individuals who actually spot trade for profit on Coinbase Pro, except for professional traders and bot traders. Um, so, so that leaves Binance for BTC USDT, which is a lot of volume, but individuals can go elsewhere to do that also. So it would make sense that Bitcoin is appreciating due to a lot of individuals moving out of their altcoins, moving into Bitcoin for security, and then whether they move into USD. See, that's what I would be cautious about taking this long on Bitcoin, because everybody's moving into BTC to pull their funds off Binance or move out of their altcoin positions on Binance. And what happens when they decide to go to an exchange and cash out? Remember, the arbitrage is efficient throughout the market. So if a lot of U.S. investors start dumping Bitcoin to move into cash to be to protect themselves on on Coinbase Pro, then the rest of the market is going to respond as well. And, and Bitcoin is going to take a negative move to the downside. And from a technical perspective, as I've said for a while, that wouldn't surprise me. Looking at the weekly and looking at the setup that we had the exact last time we broke out of the bear market would not surprise me to see that pullback to the weekly 1355 moving average crossover zone of origination, which is what I've been calling for for a while. But again, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'll be trading based on that. For example, I'm not short on the market right now. I'm flat. Actually, by being flat in Bitcoin, I'm 1x long, so it is what it is. So we'll see how that plays out. Okay, let's go look at our, uh, let's go look at some fundamental indicators right here. And we will go to uh, longs and shorts. Go to our long-term charts. And we will go to our Okay, and we're going to do the same thing here for No, we don't want that. We want longs. All right, so here we have all the longs. Okay, so 25,563 long positions. Alts Bitcoin, I can see that happening. BTC Fiat, why? Um, so think psychologically, all right? So not everybody might think the same way that you do. So individuals are moving out of their altcoins because they're worried about in the United States because they're worried about what they may be able to trade because a lot of people don't know a whole lot about the market. A lot of people who have altcoins, you know, doesn't a lot. So, so the market is open to everybody, especially cryptocurrency. And a lot of traders in cryptocurrency are uneducated investors. So they're going to act just as I went over. They're going to act very irrationally anytime anything happens. So they are already kind of gotten a one two punch on the cheek now that they're scared that they're not going to be able to trade on Binance. And a lot of people don't even understand what this means or what the future is going to hold. They don't have plans. They just react, right? They just react to the market. They don't have a plan on how to, how to respond or how to trade the market, regardless of what happens. So a lot of people are just reacting based off fundamentals. Uh, oh, a coin's pumping, buy it. Oh, a coin's dumping, sell it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so 
So in this particular situation, uh, it wouldn't surprise me for them to go the extra route of security and moving the cash. It really wouldn't. Uh, thank you, DIY guy. I'm looking. I'm really, really looking forward to the vacation, man. Yeah, kids grow up and want less to do with their old folks and more friends. Wish they wouldn't grow so quick, man. I feel you. I do. I mean, my 18-month-old daughter just seems like just a few days ago she was six-month-old daughter. And, you know, then it seems like 30 minutes ago she was, you know, nine-month-old daughter with her cooing and everything. And now she is wandering around and pushing me away. And it's like, man, a little tank. Anyway, so longs on the rise. So this is good. Uh, this is looking, this is a good leading fundamental indicator for Bitcoin's price. We do have longs rising, actually getting a buy signal on longs today. We would have gotten Wada Atar above the explosion level yesterday, but we didn't have a rising explosion level. So again, using Wada Atar as a primary initiator, you do have to have a rising explosion level to generate a long signal as well. Now, of course, since we have sped up our settings, we could speed up our explosion level settings, but I don't because I do like that to be a little bit more conservative. But it's okay to speed it up if uh, as you, like I, only use Wadatar as a confirming indicator. So long signal on longs right now, that would be fundamentally bullish for a Bitcoin position right now. Just looking at that in isolation. Let's also go look at the shorts. I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so 23,190 short positions and shorts on the rise also. This is this is good to see rising open interest. Now, let's take a look. Got a long signal on shorts yesterday, and Wadatar also generated a primary entry signal as well. This is a stronger signal. Uh, this is a stronger signal for shorts over longs. So I do like to see rising open interest. This means a lot of people are betting both ways in the market. A lot of people are hedging up their positions with shorts as well. Uh, I think people are also hedging their short positions with longs. Not a whole lot to deduce just from this, except that that does mean that does mean that as open interest is rising, the follow through movement will be large. Now, this doesn't give us directional bias, to be quite honest with you, to see both longs and shorts rising. This is just letting us know what is natural, because as people are flowing money from the Binance situation into Bitcoin from their altcoins, individuals are putting on additional positions on Bitfinex to hedge against market volatility, as you should be as well. You should be prepared for whichever way the market decides to go. You should never be weighted in one asset. And so when we talk about Bitcoin, Hedge, and people always want to talk about, okay, well, how do you hedge inside cryptocurrency? Of course you can't, especially if you want to trade on options on Deribit. Liquidity there is an issue, though, for, uh, for example. Um, implied volatility can also be an issue, for example. But I think the best way to, to hedge what you're doing against cryptocurrency is to be involved in other markets. You know, most people who trade crypto, like, don't trade Forex, don't trade equity, don't have gold, don't have foreign currencies, don't have any investments, don't own any real estate, or are just aren't interested in that whatsoever. It's just all crypto all the time, 100%. Well, that's dumb. That's dumb. Because there's lots of opportunities out there in other aspects. And if you are, um, if you are busy in all different aspects of the market, as you should be as a trader, then you're going to be you're going to be diversified. And so anything that might happen in one particular market is going to be hedged by what you're doing over here. And it's just easy as a trader to pick up and move because sometimes cryptocurrency is in the market where you want to be trading. For example, 2018, you held a short open on Bitcoin and Ethereum, or excuse, you know, for the majority of 2018, you held a short open on Bitcoin and Ethereum and you didn't touch altcoins. You just didn't touch altcoins. You know, I know that a lot of people stuck it out and ground and traded and everything, and we did very well with altcoin positions as well. But smart traders also picked up and moved to other asset classes with more volatility. Do you know what Forex did through 2018? Did good things. So, um... Hippie boy 420 says Bitfinex is using a mixer for their USDT coins. They also recorded the conversation of the whale pool discussing pumping the price with Tether. Of course. I mean, that's that's what they do. Watch Wabi Pro. They will probably be the next Binance. I am not. Uh, I'm actually think that that's probably quite likely, to be honest with you. I think that's probably quite likely. Uh, Coinbase Pro is also going to see more volatility and more liquidity now. Uh, I would almost guarantee it. I would bet on that. All right. So let's go look at <clears throat> let's go look at uh, Bvol. Interestingly enough, Bitcoin volatility took a pretty big hit. So mostly seeing the activity coming in from hedged. Bitcoin dominance taking a big dive up. I mean, a, a big move up. Uh, this is just natural to see. As we said, as Bitcoin as Bitcoin dominance was quite low, this looked good for altcoins and altcoins were good to trade. And now that we see Bitcoin dominance breaking back above, that means individuals are exiting altcoins and moving into Bitcoin or individuals are moving out of Tether and moving into Bitcoin. We need to look at the Tether dominance as well to see this. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the Tether dominance holding strong. Tether dominance still sitting above the baseline. RVGI would have you out of Tether essentially or saying that, hey, 
um, if you were just the way to look at this, the way to look at this is if your exit indicator is telling you to get out of tether, this might be telling you that you want to be cautious about betting against the market because the tether dominance might be moving down. Now that's not an uh, that's not a signal to be betting against tether dominance. For example, uh, that would be actually putting in a bearish signal, crossing below the baseline, giving a short signal. That would be a signal to do something. Uh, but we do see some tell some telltale indications. We do see water tar dropping off. This is kind of our early indicator right here. Also our confirmation indicator. It's still green. We're still above the baseline. Minx is still above the zero line. So it would be irrational of us to try to predict the market and say that well because this is happening we can dive. There's been so many opportunities, so many occasions where I've seen a market look just like this, where something is consolidating your resistance and then continue to dive and, and then continue to, to push higher. That's actually generally what things do. When something consolidates at a higher price, typically it ends up moving higher because uh, an object in motion tends to stay in motion in the direction that it is moving. It takes significant volume and volatility to reverse a market and move it in the opposite direction. So um, individuals are moving into Bitcoin and not Tether, but just be warned, just be cautious. When Bitcoin makes the slightest sneeze, I think you will see that most likely change, but we'll see how the weekend plays out. All right, with that being said, Top Pat, good to see you, man. Long time no see, friend. We've been here every day. Where have you been? It's okay, man. It's good to see you back. Do I think Litecoin is doomed? No, I don't think it's doomed, but I think it just had a nice little boom. Uh, Litecoin was one of my better trades this month. Um, I think that Litecoin is going to have a little bit of a pullback and then probably carry right on along with the business hand. But we'll see. The, this Binance thing is affecting quite a few things. All right, so um, before we get into traditional markets in Forex, let's go ahead and go over some of that news. Uh, so let's just go and cover the, the topic at hand before we take our break here. Then when we come back from the break, we'll cover traditional markets and Forex. Uh, so here we are right here. So this is from Cointelegraph, Binance to stop serving U.S. traders following announcement of U.S. dedicated platform. So uh, major crypto exchange Binance announced today, June 14th, that it has updated its terms of use, i.e. terms of service, which notably includes a restriction of services to U.S.-based individuals and corporate traders. The restriction follows yesterday's news that the company is launching a separate, fully regulated fiat to crypto platform for the U.S. market. Today's announcements provides a timeline for the new terms to come into effect, specifying that, quote, after 90 days, so on the 12th of September 2019, users who are not in accordance with Binance's, term, with Binance's terms of use will continue to have access to their wallets and funds, but will no longer be able to trade or deposit on Binance. So in summary, what that means is, just for those of you who aren't paying attention, on September 12th, 2019, if you are a U.S.-based customer, you're not going to be able to open positions on Binance. You're done. Now, you can still have access to your wallet. They're not going to take your funds. You can still withdraw, but you cannot deposit fresh funds and you cannot enter into new trades. So there's really no reason to freak out. And I, this is why I think that we're going to continue to see pumps and exit pumps, especially from some of these ICOs and maybe not even exit pumps, but can, or excuse me, from these altcoins, but some sustained movements. But I would be really, really cautious about ICO coins. So any U.S.-based investors, which make up 24% of total volume, any U.S.-based investors that bought or invested heavily in ICO coins and have been holding on to them, which is a lot of people from the people that I talk to, for example, um, they might take this as an opportunity to exit their positions because they don't want to sit for the next year or two for the new U.S. market to get regulated and, and fixed and, and, and get back up to appreciation. Um, some will, but some are going to be short-sighted as well and say, screw this. I'm going to take an L. I'm out. Hey, wishing you the best too, man. Now, while the use of a VPN would ostensibly allow, would allow U.S. users to circumvent the new restrictions, withdrawals for non-verified users remain capped at up to two Bitcoin per 24 hours, worth 16 grand at press time. Sums above this threshold would require users to provide evidence that they are complying with the with the platform's terms of use. <clears throat> so, CZ tweeted yesterday: "Short term, some short term pains may be necessary for long term gains." He's a poet, and we always work hard to turn every short term pain into a long term gain. Now, listen. I'm a pretty big fan of Binance. I think they've done great work for the space. I think that they're one of the better exchanges out there. But the reality is, is that for most individuals trading in the United States, they're going to be moving off of Binance and onto Coinbase Pro and Wabi uh, Pro. So keep your eyes open for those exchanges, guys. Uh, and again, we were already talking about including Coinbase Pro into our trading, into our daily scans, and into PDP methodology. So potentially we'll be adding the Wabi Pro market as well. I don't have verification on that yet because it's not a decision that I've made, but we've already said as a group that we're going to start doing Coinbase Pro as well. Especially if we lose the preponderance of coins that we're able to trade on Binance. And since diversification is such a huge part of our strategy, then most likely we'll have to look for something else as well. So obviously we reported earlier that, excuse me, my eye is screwing with me. Obviously we reported earlier that the Binance Dex is going to be geo-blocking United States customers. They already are. You can currently access the Binance Dex via a VPN. 
And what is interesting is that CZ revealed in September 2018 that the company intends to launch five to 10 fiat to crypto exchanges, two per continent within one year without specifying the exact location. So they've already done Uganda, Singapore, and Jersey with support for a limited range of cryptocurrencies. So we're going to be seeing a Binance US regulated exchange, which means you'll have fiat to crypto built in more than likely. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. So this is going to be good, but in the short term, it's not great right now. Ricky Thompson says, by investing in other assets, you are more open to the economics of the world and how the whole mechanic of all assets work. You're right, man. You're right. Yeah, I like Coinbase Pro. I mean, it's, it's a good, simple platform. The reason that I don't like trading on Coinbase Pro is because of liquidity generally. All right. And then they throw in a plug for Huawei Pro down here, which is neat. So let's go look at uh, the source of all wisdom and information in the world, crypto Twitter. So this is from Remy Goomba. Here is a breakdown of what coins will still be available as things stand to U.S. customers through U.S. compliant exchanges once Binance stops U.S.-based trading in September. So this is assuming that we don't have a Binance exchange available to us in the United States by that time, which most likely we won't. Um, so here are the coins that we're going to have available to us. Cardano. Uh, is going to be available to us on Bitrix, Kraken, eToro, <clears throat> and Wabi. Uh, ADX is going to be available on Bitrix. Ion is going to be available on Poloniex. Ardor is going to be, be available on Bit. Oh, excuse me, that's Poloniex. Uh, uh, Bitrix and Poloniex. Uh, Arc, Atom, Basic Attention Token, BNB, BNT, uh, BitShares, BitTorrent Token, Syndicator, Civic Dash, Decred, Denticoin, DNT. ELF, Engine Coin, EOS, Ethereum Classic, Fetch AI, Fun, NeoGas, GRS, Grossel Coin, Icon, IOST, Miota, IOTX, Komodo, KNC, Kyber Network, Loom, Loopring, uh, Lisk, Mana, Decentraland, uh, Crypto.com, Monaco, Metal, Nav, NCash, Neo, Pundix, NPXX, NXX, NXS, Nexus, OMG, Omisago, ONG Ontology, o, or excuse me, ONG, yeah, ONG, ONT, OST, PAX, PIVX, Poly, Power, Quantum, RCN, Rep, RLC, Raven, SciaCoin, ST, Steam, Storage, Strat, Sys, Tron, True USD, USD Coin, USDS, Stable USD, Viacoin, Vibrate, um, Waves, Zem, Nem, Rest in Peace, Stellar Lumens, XMR, Monero, Ripple, Verge, Zcoin, Zcash, Zen, Zill, and Zero X. So uh, we're going to lose access to Eternity, Adji, AMB, APPC, ARN, AST, Bitcoin Diamond, uh, BCPT, Bluezella, BQX, Ethos, uh, Breadcoin, Bitcoin Gold, CDT, Seller, Cyber Miles, Data, DGD, DLT, Doc, IDO, Engine, EVX, FTM, Fuel, GNT Go, uh, GTO, GVT, GXS, HC, Hot, INS, Key, Lend, Link, LUN, Matic, MDA, MFT, Myth, Myth, Nano, or Myth, Monitha, Nano, NAS, Neblio, Nulls, Neblio, my love, Oaks, OneCoin, Harmony, PHB, previously known as Red Pulse Phoenix, the coin previously known as Red Pulse Phoenix, Po, Poa, PPT, Q, K, QKC, QLC, which I know will make a lot of people sad. So the basket of Qs, QKC, QLC, and QSP, which is our favorite Telegram pump coins. Raiden, Ren, Rex, Sky, Singles, Skycoin, my love, SNM, Storm, T Fuel, Theta, TNB, TNT, Vet, Vibe, Wabi, Wan, rest in peace, uh, We Power, WTC, and Yo Yo, one of my favorites, Yo Yo, one of the best pump coins out there next to Doc. So we're going to be losing access to a lot of coins uh, as things stand. So these are going to be U.S. compliant coins that we're going to be able to trade Coinbase Pro, Bitrix, Poloniex, Kraken, eToro, and the other uh, exchanges that we currently have access to. Crypto Kitty says, this all really sucks. Guess it's back to Forex. Well, I don't think so. Not for us anyways. Uh, and Remy Goomba continues away with the takeaway is that the coins in white might see their trading volume decline throughout the summer. And the other Binance exchanges like Jersey and Uganda have fiat ramps, but no alts. You can bet that's how Binance US will start too. So the exchanges are Coinbase, Bitrix, Poloniex, Beeksy, Kraken, eToro, Robinhood, and Huobi Pro, all of which have a tremendous opportunity to steal market share from Binance while they struggle in the United States. So this is not a death knell for cryptocurrency. This is just a transition away from Binance, which understands that if it wants to cater to U.S. customers, it's got to play by the United States rules because the United States will shut that shit down. They will. They will shut that shit down. So. Well, truth hurts, we're already through the list, so you know what I mean? It's uh, it's done, brother.
<laughs> Didn't know you could fit that much garbage into one minute. Uh, most of those are scams. Can you trade on KuCoin in the USA? I believe you can, yes. But they're not U.S. compliant. So all these exchanges are compliant with U.S. regulatory agencies. So KuCoin is in the same realm as Binance is right now. That's why Binance is making the switch. Uh, we'll see if KuCoin does as well. A bit makes me says, well. <laughs> um, and yeah, Remy Goomba says, I can see KuCoin following suit and putting a geo block in place. So there's lots of opportunity out there, guys. This isn't a death knell for trading altcoins. We're just going to have to make a little bit of a switch from Binance to something else. If you want to play by the rules and not VPN up. Coming from Moon Overlord, Binance ending trading for U.S. customers in 90 days and making a separate, likely limited exchange for U.S. citizens. I am, I'd expect all kinds of craziness. Exit pumps on coins that won't be on Binance U.S. Whales dumping the remaining ICO tokens. God knows what else. Stay Safu up there, guys. Binance equals Binance killer. Uh, coming from uh, Crypto, Christopher Walken. Uh, shout out to you, man. Uh, rest in peace, Binance. We had a good run. September 2017 to September 2019. And uh, I feel like I should pull open like some Anamine or like, the, you know, the national anthem. You know, I feel like I should salute or something. Oh, I think uh, I think it is. Uh, I think it is uh, pulling up the music. It's taps. <laughs> I, I don't think you guys can hear it, but I can because it's too uh, it's too soft. Uh, right. Because I'm uh, only pulling in. Uh, There we go. Let's let's send it out properly. Everybody, just just a moment of silence for Binance, for us in the United States. God bless you, crypto. All right, that's enough. Moment of silence over. And from another crypto, Christopher Walken. There already is a Binance US. It's called Coinbase Pro. Okay, guys. So that's news article number one. And the other two things I wanted to go over a little bit is why lobbying growth is a sign that crypto is maturing. So let's see here. So not only does data indicate that the number of ID verified users of cryptocurrency doubled over 2018 while the market was taking a huge slide down, but there are lots of other metrics that suggest adoption is gaining traction. As many as 84% of companies worldwide are involved with blockchain-based technologies in some facet, while ownership is twice as high among young Americans than it is among the general United States population. Of course, the new uh, generations always adopt the best technology and push technology forward, and that's how it becomes the norm. When television first came out, older individuals said, what's that? We like the radio. And then when Netflix came out, you know, the older generation was, what's that? I like cable. And I'm sure that when I'm, you know, in 10 years, my daughter's going to be like, yeah, I mean, we just, just plug it right up our nose and we just experience reality. And I'm going to be like, yeah, but I like Netflix. And she's going to be like, you're stupid, dad. Uh, although I'm a little bit of a different person, like if I could plug something up a, nine, up, up a nose and experience VR, I'm down for that. That's way better than the Matrix thing or anything involving any other orifice, so... Uh, and at a time when there's plenty of talk about the need for crypto to standardize and regulate itself before adoption can really take off, it would, see, it would now seem that lobbying on cryptocurrency-related issues is also increasing. The indicator of growth emerged at the end of April when Congress released its later, latest quarterly data on lobbying on Capitol Hill. So its stats revealed that the number of companies and organizations lobbying for crypto had increased between Q4 2018 and Q1 2019 with lobbying from MasterCard, uh, Accenture, EY, underlining how the regulatory fates of blockchain and cryptocurrency isn't of interest only to Coinbase, Coin Center, and other representatives of the coin industry. Yes, you guys heard that right. MasterCard, for example, is freaking lobbying Congress for better cryptocurrency regulation and rules. So that's good. That is, I mean, that's fantastic to see. What are the top 10 lobbyists interested in crypto? Let's see here. Uh, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the National Association of Manufacturers, IBM, the American Property Causality or Casualty Insurance Association. Why not? Yeah, because they want to put all this stuff on a blockchain because it's better. Just as I was talking about yesterday about how tracking the production, transportation, and delivery of pharmaceutical drugs is a task best designed not for a centralized database but for a blockchain, so is pretty much all transportation in the world. Anything where something is manufactured, uh, transported, and delivered, that needs to be on a blockchain. That is just a better technological solution than anything. 
Last time I plugged something up my nose, I promise you it wasn't VR. Nah, man, it was Kale. Moving on. Entertainment Software Association, the ESA. Ernst & Young, Accenture, Fidelity Investments. Woo, go Fidelity, my previous broker. The National Venture Capital Association and the National Association of Mutual Insurance Companies. So uh, there's a kind of a mixed bag here between individuals who are looking at cryptocurrency as payments. So for example, Fidelity, for example, Ernst & Young, for example, um, Accenture, but the other, the National Association of Manufacturers, IBM, uh, which is probably interested for it as their own coin, but and it, moving forward, the, the National Association of Mutual Insurance Companies, um, the, uh, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, uh, you know, the, the Insurance Association, all these individuals are looking at blockchain to do the purpose of blockchain and investing lots of money, guys. Blockchain is the future. It's hands down the best technology to deal with a lot of these problems of creating something somewhere and sending it through untrusted means somewhere else. So whenever there's an issue of trust, blockchain, blockchain, baby, all the way. This is just really good to see. And this is also good for the price. Uh, the last article I want to go over just a little bit is Cointelegraph is going to have a new documentary called Crypto in the USA. Ooh, crypto in the USA. All right. So the Cointelegraph team traveled across the US to get a sense of what the general sentiment about crypto is and where the industry is heading. So uh, later on this year, they're going to release. Uh, so the first video is live right here. So here's the first video right here. You guys can go check that out. This is Cointelegraph's, uh, uh, you know, just summary of what crypto is like in the United States. Well, we've got guns and drugs. All right. Love to see that in a crypto documentary. So you guys can go check this out. This is live on Cointelegraph.com. It's also on YouTube. You can see the first video. And later on, they're going to be releasing two more videos, Blockchain Island, as well as sex and crypto. Dun, 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 dun. It's like Tinder with, uh, it's like Tinder with BitTorrent token. All right, slide into the DMs for some of that Tron, baby. All right, moving on. Uh, let's get back over into the charts. Uh, let's get back over into the charts. And uh, it's 12.57, guys, so let's take a brief break. And when we come back, we'll do traditional markets and Forex, break down what's cracking over there. And uh, we'll take your requests and also look at what you guys like. And we'll also engage with the chat, guys. So before we go to break, if you are tired of getting wicked out of your position on BitMEX, if you're tired of your order not getting filled, for example, and in general, just tired of all the unsavory shenanigans over on BitMEX, if you're interested in where I trade my futures contracts for Bitcoin, Ethereum, EOS, and ZERP, i.e. Ripple, um, and you want to check out a better exchange, a more trustworthy exchange, then I recommend you check out Bybit. They've got fantastic liquidity. They've got amazing customer service. Can you can you pick up the phone and call BitMEX customer service if you've got a problem? No? Oh, you can do that with Bybit. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, Bybit is, has been great to me. I love trading on there. They've been really good to everybody in the group. They've been really good to everybody that signed up. Uh, you guys can sign up at Bybit. If you guys go over to bybit.crackingcryptocurrency.com, that's bybit.crackingcryptocurrency.com. There's also a link down in the description down below. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to show us some love wherever you happen to be watching. If you're on YouTube or Facebook, make sure to give us a thumbs up. And if you're on Twitch and DLive, make sure to follow to the channel and give us a subscription if you like. We always try to do special things for our subs as well, guys. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. Get those requests ready, and I'll see you in a few minutes.
back guys thank you so much for bearing with us through the break and i want to give a big shout out to permanent vacation and jails na01 for the follows over on twitch thank you guys so much welcome to the community and jesse gordon dot com direct and london sound systems thank you guys so much for the subscriptions over on youtube and the biggest shout out to mr hut qc for resubscribing for four months over there on twitch man much love to you my good friend I hope you enjoy your new Twitch loyalty badge. You've got the little CC emoji guy. And as always, sub love to you, my good friend. Okay. So let's do a couple things. First thing, tunes. Tunes. <clears throat> and traditional market in Forex. So let's get into the daily. And let's get into traditional markets first. So we'll go over and look at the uh, CFD on Awanda, which is my broker. So we'll look at SP500. Of course, I can't trade the CFD because I'm based in the United States. That's why I'd like to move. That's why it, when I get back into Forex, I'll be looking to move my trading offshore. But I digress. So CFD on Awanda got the long signal over here on the 5th of June. And just riding that long position, take profit one and take profit two on the CFD. Uh, price is now just consolidating. Let's look at RVGI. RVGI still has you in a long trade on the S&P 500 CFD. Nothing quite to do. Let's go look at what Americans can trade. Let's go look over at the E-minis. Now, the NQ. NQ similarly gave a long over here on the 6th of June. You would have taken a long leverage position. Hip take profit one. Uh, did you come back down to your entry? Yes. So your entry got hit right there. So you're 50% out at take profit one. And now you're flat on your position waiting for another entry signal. So no trade to be taken on the NQ. Let's go over and look at the SP. Similarly, this was a more profitable trade over here. So on the SP on E-minis, we would have taken the long again on the 5th of June. So we would have had a long open on SP. And then we would have taken a long on the NQ the next day. So nothing to do right now. So we've hit take profit one. RVGI still has in this trade. So you'd still have a long open on SP. Let's go over and look at the Dow on E-minis. You would have taken a long position on the Dow and the SP the same on the 5th of June. Uh, let's see here on YM, we would have take profit one, not take profit two yet. Still holding on to your position. RVGI is getting pretty close. So you might actually be out of your position today. Most likely it won't be until tomorrow. Looking over at the Russell, same thing. Long signal right here. Did we hit take profit one yet? Nope. So just holding on to our position here. And then again, we did. Let's scroll this up. I don't think we've hit take profit one yet, to be honest with you. So let's go check. On this candle, uh, long take profit one was 1540 on the Russell. And what was the high of this? 1539.70. Missed it by 30 cents. So some people would have taken profit. But again, uh, just based off the way that methodologies work. Russell's not a winning trade, so you'd still be holding on to this. Does RVGI have you out yet? No, so you'd still be holding on to this long trade and you're in profit up on the Russell. 
about half a percent. Not too bad. Not too bad of a daily trade. Not the best daily trade, obviously, with a profit potential probably of about 2-3%. Wendy, hey, what's going on? Good to see you. So let's get over into West Texas. Let's look at crude. Uh, West Texas is still not along yet. We are below the baseline. We do not take longs below the baseline. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Yeah, nothing to do on West Texas. No, no trade to be put on yet on the CFD. Looking over at the VIX, VIX is sitting at 15.71. Looking at Bentley Crude, Bentley Crude and West Texas had both Bentley Crude and West Texas. Bentley Crude making a movement up as well towards the baseline. Uh, still no long position to be taken yet on this. So traditional markets looking at the indexes and looking at oil, looking at crude, not huge trades to make. If you guys have any requests, any traditional markets you'd like to, to look at, let me know in the chat. Let me scroll down up through the chat and see what I missed during the break. Matrix plus Borg equals Morg. All right. Sylvan Newby, is Binance being banned in the USA for sure? Yes. What's for dinner? All coins on a shingle? Uh... Uh, Sam Ross says, if I live in Puerto Rico, do I have to follow these rules? I would assume yes, but you might want to look into that. It's like a blueprint and what to invest in. <laughs> Notice how Bitcoin's not on that list? Yeah, I did notice that. Okay, let's go over and look at Forex. See if we are continuing on with the volatility in the FX markets today. Euro USD taking a huge dive today. Taking a huge dive. I don't know what the news is. I'm not trading Forex right now, or I'd be more plugged into what the news is. Uh, all we know is that, look, got a long signal right here. Didn't take it here. Took it on the pullback. Two days later, we would have taken the long on the close of this candle or gotten the pullback to the baseline right here, however you wanted to take it. But these were both qualifyings via discretion on the one to three bar rule. Uh, let's see. From here, hit take profit one, hit take profit two on our long positions. And we would be out at our entry right here. Uh, so our entry got hit. So we were 80% out of the position here. So pretty much sold the absolute top. And then the last 20% of our position, we got rid of a break even. So a good average price somewhere right around here. That's a good trade on the Euro USD. So let's see, that probably would have averaged about, about 60, 60 to 70 pips. Not a bad trade. Not a bad trade when probably a lot of people just got absolutely decimated by this huge dive in the Euro USD. Uh, dollar yen, still nothing to do right now. Actually, we're going to get a continuation short on the close of this candle right here. So that'll be an interesting trade to take if we can take a USD yen short today. Uh, pound dollar. Uh, pound dollar, again, I'm uh, talking about the pound dollar, pound dollar, it seems like, you know, uh, Forex Twitter, everybody was screaming for a pound dollar long. And what do we see happen? The banks decided to take it down. Got a short, look at that. I mean, look, you can't make this stuff up, guys. Got a short signal on Minx on yesterday's candle close right here, right here. You can't make this stuff up, man. Aussie dollar. Uh, Aussie dollar got a short signal on this candle right here that was confirmed. So we would have been in an Aussie dollar short and very, very happy about taking that position now up about 63 pips. Dollar CAD, uh, no long signal to take yet. Might be getting one on the close of today's candle, but uh, Minx is not there yet. Minx is not there yet. Wada Tar is not giving you a primary long either because you have no rising explosion level. Uh, Kiwi Swissy. Uh, got a short signal here. Didn't really get confirmation on it. Maybe you could have, maybe you could have jumped the gun, but there wasn't really any confirmation that you could have taken here. Uh, yeah, volume oscillator wasn't really throwing up or confirming anything either, and that's even with the sped up settings. 
Uh, dollar Swissy. Nothing to do yet. Still haven't gotten a confirmed long signal on that. So we are breaking above the baseline on today's trade. So let's see how price evolves. Uh, Euro Yen getting a short signal on the Euro Yen on today's candle. Confirmed by Wada Atar. Uh, Euro Pound still continuing to consolidate up there. So uh, RVGI did have you out yesterday out of your long. Uh, had you out a couple times here and then got you back in on this continuation long. And here was another continuation long. So three amazing trades and one pretty much break even right now. So nothing to do on uh, on Euro Pound. Uh, Kiwi Dollar obviously is a short. We got a short signal on Kiwi Dollar yesterday. And we get to wake up to this. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. This is the way to trade Forex, guys. Same way. PTP, man. <clears throat> Slow, patient, and steady, man. Uh, Elijah Fence says, so what is the protocol with having a wallet? Is that the loophole with Binance? So with with uh, with Binance, you're going to still be able to have access to your wallet, but you can't put on trades and you can't make deposits after September 12th, 2019. Uh, you can withdraw, but and you can still have your wallet there, but you can't deposit to that wallet. It is what it is. Nulls for the win. Uh, BF, should, should I wait to buy Zerp? Uh, we didn't really look at Zerp. Let's uh, add that to the request list. And nulls for the win. Let's check it out. Is Binance getting rid of U.S. customers? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, they are. Yep, we just went over that for about the last hour. Uh, dollar Aussie, confirm long signal here, and we get to wake up to this. Uh, take profit one hit, on its way to take profit two. Uh, and Dollar Aussie doing good. Dollar Euro. Let's see here. Uh, no long signal yet. No long signal yet. Uh, might get one at the close of today's candle. I doubt it. Uh, we'll probably generate a long signal, and then we can get in on a pullback, if we get a signal at all. Uh, dollar Yuan. Let's see here. Uh, nothing, man. Nothing on the dollar Yuan. Might be getting a continuation long tomorrow, but not one today. Uh, pound CAD. Nothing. Nothing to do here. Got a continuation short right here that was a great trade, and nothing nothing churning up now. Uh, in fact, we got told to get out of our pound CAD trade here. Uh, looking at gold. Uh, gold had a nice another gold had a nice wick up to one ATR away from price right now, and throwing up a continuation long on this candle right here. Uh, palladium continues to soar, and this could not make me happier because I did buy some physical palladium not too long ago, and just really happy to see this. Just really happy to see this again. Same thing. PTP catches them all, man. Uh, long signal right here, and you are just absolutely dominating this trade right now. No exit, no indication to get out yet. Uh, looking at silver, uh, silver gave a long signal here that hit take profit one and take profit two. And we are currently getting a continuation long signal on silver. So there's a long trade on silver right now. Pronounce UN. Un. Uh, commodium, or rhodium, commods, commodium, <laughs> commodium. Uh, let's see, GLD gave a long signal yesterday that hit take profit one, and you're out at entry. So just just a quick grab, just a quick grab yesterday on SIBO, GLD. Long signal down here, got to take this gold trade pretty much all the way up to the top, and got you out right here, which is cool. I mean, yeah, there was more in there, and you kind of grabbed a little bit of it with the continuation long on the close of yesterday's candle that you were able to snag TP1 off of, but... It was short-lived. And CAD Yen is actually showing, uh, throwing up a short signal right now. Volume's not quite there. Let's see. We got not too long until the candle closes, so let's see. Chinese U on. It's not Wan. It's not Wen. It's Chinese U on. To the best of my knowledge. I know that that's way better than most people that pronounce it. Ricky says, I'm not sure if it has to do with the Italians making moves to exit the euro. That wouldn't surprise me. Uh, more people want to leave the EU than get in the EU. Chinese. UN. Chinese UN. Okay, not UN. UN. Okay, that's better.
All right, so we pulled out some good trades in the Forex market today, still in some gray trades in the Forex market today, and there's traditional market trades as well. Okay. Let's go over into, this should actually be Ethereum USD. Thanks, Robert. I appreciate it, brother. Actually, that should be Coinbase. Okay. Uh, Lou Pinsnyder, do I have an automated system that enters and exits these trades, or do they all require manually trading the signals? I'm a manual trader, man. I don't automate anything. I have a nice system. takes me about an hour a day to trade. And that's all I do. I trade at a certain time of day. I trade. I trade a certain type of setup, and I just consistently look at every single pair in on the exchanges that I trade every day. It takes about thirty minutes to do the scan. It takes about thirty minutes to to modify my positions and enter. And that's it. And then I walk away. You know what I do the rest of my day? I um. Uh, well, I do a lot of back testing. I always love testing new strategies. I work on advanced risk management strategies. I shoot courses for my group. I engage with my group, I teach my group, and I work with my students. That's what I do. It's a good life, man. It's a good life when you trade systematically and sustainably. KCS making a nice move up. Let's look at the last hour on Crypto Bubbles here. In the last hour, having some bottom bounces on off these. Nulls for the win. Uh, this is a crypto trading dot toys, Robert. Crypto trading dot toys. Check this out. You want to see how BCH is performing on multiple markets, multiple time frames? You can set all these. And if you go to intervals, you can change all the different uh, time frames. So you can look at the same, you can look at uh, on the same um, asset class, but here we go. We've got the minute, the three minute, the five minute, the 15 minute, the 30, the 60, the two hour, the four hour and the daily. So for all you day traders, this is, this is what you want. Now you can do this in trading view with the pro plan, but if you don't have the pro plan, crypto trading dot toys. Okay, so let's go to um, Zerp. Sorry, it's going to take me a while to get over having the keyboard down there, and it's not down there anymore. XRP. I am the Jean-Luc Picard of crypto. Make it so. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh, Zerp Bitcoin, man. I'll tell you what. Let's look at Zerp Bitcoin. Threw up a short signal right here that was confirmed. And Zerp M19 threw up a short signal right here, all the way down, 7.25%. That was a great PTP trade, and you'd still be in there. Let's go look at take profit targets. Take profit one just got hit on that XRP M19 short. What is the best time to trade? I think the best time to trade is when the daily candle closes or before the daily candle closes. There's a couple, I mean, I know guys in the group trade differently. And when I do the module on time frames and when to trade, I'm going to explain that. So there are certain benefits to trading before the daily candle closes. And there are certain benefits to trading directly after the daily candle closes. And it depends on what type of setup you're looking to enter. Mufad P, have I been in profit in each of your seven years after your first loss? Um, what's my average profit? So yeah, um, yes. Uh, ever since I adopted trading systematically, so you have to. I've gone through several different phases too. So first, I was trading forex uh, on lower time frames because that's that's what was required of me. And then I was trading higher time frames with my own personal capital. So two different hats and uh, managing two different portfolios: one of investor, one of personal, and. <clears throat> I didn't really like 
having, you know, being forced to trade on those lower time frame charts. It took way too much of my day, took way too much of my energy. And honestly, I got better results doing what I wanted to do. But when you are, um, when you lock yourself into a position like that, sometimes you have to do some things a certain way. So that's when I started trading higher time frames, And then I moved into uh, cryptocurrency trading in 2016 and have traded the same way pretty much the whole time. Uh, there are other trades that I take. Uh, the majority of all the trades that I take are PTP. I do take other discretionary trades based on other factors at some points in time. I don't really talk about that too much um, because that's going to be the next course that follows PTP is for individuals that want to trade price action. Again, I used to trade price action. But yeah, yes, I've been con I'm a consistently profitable trader and have been for a long time. The United States is now being treated the same as countries on the United States is now being treated the same as countries on the UN Security Council sanctions list. Iran, North Korea, Libya, Somalia, Afghanistan, Sudan, and America. Wouldn't be surprised. The trend is clear. Crypto companies' exchanges opportunities are blocking the U.S. or leaving. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. Let me actually backtrack that a little bit. No, I don't agree with that at all, actually, now that I've read that a little bit more closely. Um, I think that the United States has strict regulatory enforcement, whereas a lot of other people... Whereas a lot of other, um, a lot of other countries do not. Uh, for example, CFDs are banned in America. They're not banned anywhere else except Singapore and a few other countries. Uh, and, and CFDs are pretty much what European traders are going to trade. So if you're in the if you're in the eurozone or you're in the UK or you're pretty much anywhere not America and you're trading on your broker, you're trading CFDs. Uh, you're not actually trading the actual stock, which gives you advantages and gives you disadvantages. But generally, you're going to pay way less commission and you're going to have more liquidity than trading. Um, then trading the actual underlying asset itself. So you're trading USD, which is a derivative, right? It's a contract for difference. So those are banned in the United States because too many American investors lost too much money. And, you know, CFTC thinks that it's their goddamn job to step in and be a nanny state because the Amer America is a nanny state. Don't, don't get it twisted, man. Um, does Binance affect Canada? Is Canada in the United States? No, they do not. Um, no, man, it doesn't, RJ. Thanks for the question. Good question, man. Good question. Um, do I have a video in the premium group that shows the strategy you teach and how to use your proprietary signals for new users and premiums so you only trade around the daily close around 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? Cor well, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but correct, yes. Yep. So, yeah, just to be really clear, um, here's what you get in my group. Uh, you get my entire course for premium plus and above members. You get the entire course. You get all the premium webinars. Uh, you get live VIP Ask Me Anything videos every single weekend. Um, you get all the written educational content. You get the tools. You get the position size calculators. You get the advanced position size calculators in the trading journal. You get your updated block folio. You get your private Discord community. You get access to multiple signal providers. You get access to our analysts. Uh, you get access to your peers. You get access to all our proprietary indicators and strategies and the information on how to use all of them as well, which is clearly laid out and structured as well and continues to and continues to grow every single week, actually. Yep. Every single day. Every single day, Allah. Every single day, except for tomorrow and Sunday because I won't be trading. I'm going on vacation. Okay, getting off crypto bubbles. So just get a VPN and you're all set with Binance. You got it right, Wall 2D2. You are all set, unless you want to withdraw more than two Bitcoin a day. And I think that I think there's going to be a lot of uh, enhanced volatility. Uh, CFOS, thank you so much for the follow on Twitch. And I'm sorry about the alerts. They're usually much cooler than that. So those of you who have been watching the show for a while know that the alerts are usually a lot cooler than that. But having a little bit of an issue with Streamlabs. I don't think they like that I switched over to OBS, so I think they're rebelling against me. I think that's I think that's what's going on. That's the only thing that I can think of. They are actively rebelling against me. Uh, and uh, uh, Joey, Joang, thank you so much for the follow as well over there on Twitch. Sorry that I missed you.
Uh, so should you wait to buy XRP? Yes. Yes, you should. Nulls. Nulls for the win. Ooh, big pump. Uh, big pump on nulls. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this would have just been a losing trade had I taken it. Uh, winning trade right here. Here's a long signal on nulls. And... Let's see. One, two, three. Take profits on that. Probably hold that trailing take profit open. Let's see here. Yeah, price runs up another 10%. I probably get kicked out right about here. So pretty much sell the top of the market. And continuation long here that I wouldn't have taken because I was already in a position. So good. So this signal gets mitigated. And this is the only trade I would have taken on nulls. About a 36% trade. Well, let's try it. Nope, don't want that. Not good enough. Still a robot. I'll fix it, guys. There we go. Turn the saturation down a little bit. I think I, I like. I think I look a lot more natural now. Moment of silence for U.S. finance. Yeah, man. Bow, bow, bow. There we go. Well, it's all right. I'm okay with being a little Donald Trumpy. VPN should be good, but I am sure they will want ID. I doubt it. I don't think that Binance International is going to add ID here. Jay Kreutzer says, I was talking to some members in the group in regards to the VPN. Do you think it will work even though we open the account with US credentials? So here's the thing. This is what I think. If you have KYC'd your account with Binance, you're screwed you're totally screwed. You need to open up a new account, non-KYC, and use a VPN. That's how it's going to have to work. So if, you have a, if you're a United States citizen and you KYC'd with finance, your account's done. Uh, September 12, 2019, your account's done. You're going to have to open up a new account, move your funds there, and VPN if you want. Um, so yeah, I think that's the answer. Now, the interesting thing, hey, what's going on, Irish Girl Crypto? Uh, Brought me, how showing it. No, no, it's all good, girl. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Tron Bat Andy? Yeah, let's check it out. Uh, the thing is, with three commas, that's what I think is interesting, Andy. Sorry. Uh, that's what I think is interesting. Uh, we're going to have to go go look at charts.coinprater.co. Coin Paprika. Oh, don't do this to me. I'm not exactly sure how. Um, 
no price data? Uh, who is? Tron bet is? Tron's going to open up United States Exchange? Or Binance. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I know. We, we've gone, we, went, we talked about this for about an hour. So, um, but using Binance International. So the Binance that we all know and love and trade on right now. You're not going to be able to trade on there as a United States citizen unless you use a VPN, which means you're going to be restricted to 2BTC, a non-KYC account, and you're not going to be able to continue to use the same account that you have right now if you did KYC. Now, for example, uh, if I wanted to do that, I would have to create a new um, Binance account because my Binance account is KYC. Of course, there's a significant amount of capital on there. So I think that we're going to see an increase, as I said earlier, I think we're going to see a significant increase in the amount of volatility and liquidity on Coinbase Pro and probably on Wabi Pro as well. So uh, we had already talked about as a group adding Wabi, or excuse me, adding Coinbase Pro that's already locked in. It's not that we talked about it. We're, we're already going to start doing Coinbase Pro at the, at the end of July potentially now at the beginning of July, I might have to kick that up a notch on the on the hierarchy of importance. Um, and Wabi might now be on our radar as well. We all just some underage trying to get some beers, yo. Oh, no, it's all good. It's hard to believe we're halfway through the year. I know, isn't that crazy? It seems like the bear market was just yesterday. And, you know, the market moves quickly, man. Not real quickly. I mean, there's been ample opportunity. We've been in full bull mode since April 1st. No, that's my opinion too, Crypto Trading Library. I think 99% of all signal groups out there are mostly pump and dump groups. Although, you know, I'm not going to lie. There are people out there trying to do good things, but they just don't have the experience or they don't provide enough educational tools. If all you get when you sign up for a group is signals, yeah, that's totally lame. That should be a runaway kind of thing. Because what that's saying is if you're only getting signals, that's saying... Especially, for example, if there's no emphasis on risk management, if there's no emphasis on why the trader trades the way that they do, and if it's just signals, regardless of whether they're based off of an individual's intuition or trading strategy or some algorithm, doesn't really matter um, because the market is random in how it distributes wins and losses to individual trades. So any trading strategy needs to be systematic, it needs to be systematic. Um, you need to have a strategic approach to how you position size, to how you psychologically trade, when you trade, what setups you trade, how you diversify risk, how you hedge. Can you trade Forex on Deribit? No. No, you can't trade Forex on Deribit. I, I trade, um, so my broker is Awanda. That's where I would recommend trading on. And you can trade, uh, to, so if you're an American trader, which you're not all infinity. So if you go to your broker, you can trade CFDs. So if you register an Awanda account, um, you can trade CFDs all day long because you're not based in America. As an American, I can't trade CFDs unless I move my trading offshore, which means I would have a trust, but that's a different story. Um, but yeah, you're going to need a traditional broker to trade Forex and, and indexes. Now, as an American, I trade E-mini. I, I can't. I don't right now. Trade E-mini futures on the CME. IOTA from Irish Girl Crypto. IOTA BTC. Taking a dive like everything else. Throwing up a continuation short on today's candle. Let's see if it closes that way. Uh, Wada Atar actually, excuse me. So PTP actually gave us a short back on the 7th of June that we would have been riding this whole time. And finally, it would be paying off. Of course, we can't short Miota. Doesn't look good though. Again, you have to understand that the way that I trade is not the same way that other people trade. Um, if something is cheap, then I will never be going long on it. I, I am a momentum trend following trader. So when price breaks above this orange line, if the rest of my system tells me to go long, then I'll go long. So what I'm worried about is I never look for this move right here. I leave that to the reversal traders. I look to catch this move right here. Similarly, I don't look to catch this move right here. I would look to catch this move right here. The failure rate for reversal trading is just too high because everybody's going to think this is the bottom 
and then this is the bottom, and then people will think this is the bottom, and then the number of people who actually get the bottom right, small. Um, Justin Worthington says Bitcoin. Well, sure, let's go take a look at Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin is seeing an increase in dominance, and we went over Bitcoin quite significantly at the beginning of the show. Uh, we did get a long signal on Bitcoin yesterday that Wada Atar did not confirm, so I'm pretty hesitant about going long on Bitcoin. Actually, I am in a 1x long on Bitcoin because I dumped my 1x short here on the close of this candle. So there's nothing to do right now. And what's actually nice about that is that my dollar valuation has actually increased. And the trades that I have closed out successfully this week have brought my overall net profitability up quite a bit. And if I have to close out some alt trades tonight, uh, which most of them are, um, I'll have to close out tonight. Um, that's totally fine. I'll still be up in good net profit for the total month and then have weathered the storm and we move on to the next trades. But I don't see a, I don't see a trade in Bitcoin right now. Now, on the close of today's candle, we could take this long position because now Wadatar is confirming. We actually have a primary signal on Wadatar itself. So if I were not going on vacation tonight, actually right after the show, uh, right after the show, I'm going to be publishing the new lesson um, for the current module for all the members of the group, which is going to be on automating your back testing with Pine Strategy Tester. It's a, the video is about a little bit over an hour. So I go through how to write a Pine Strategy Test, how to write your stop and target system that works in Pine Strategy, how to programmatically set all your options, um, common troubleshooting problems, how to take any public uh, strategy that you can find or any indicator that you can find on TradingView, any single one, and plug it into the script that we'll write together and then create a strategy based off of that. And then how to, again, mostly troubleshoot problems that come up. Most people don't know how to use Pine Strategy Tester correctly. I'd say that 90% of people don't. But that is my, uh, that is my jam, as they say. Um, M. Newbury asks for one. Let's go check out one. It's likely that most things are going to not look good. One I have not liked for quite a long time. Uh, da Vinci was trading this thing up, down, left, right, and sideways on this movement up to the upside and on the eight hour. So let's go where we can actually get some data. So probably the four hour, honestly. Uh, let's see here. Wouldn't have taken this long. Wadatar does not confirm. And then we get a short signal. Short, 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 short. Uh, here's a long signal that is a losing trade, but pretty much just short signals ever since one had its run up. There's nothing to do here. One is got more room to go down than it has room to go up, unless we can break above our baseline and actually put in some bullish price appreciation. Um, and KYC is needed on a one. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Tr so so that here's the thing. Um, cryptocurrency is the only type of market where there is no KYC. When you register on Awanda, they're going to call you. You need to give them your ID number, your passport number. I mean, it's a, it's a real thing. It's like signing up for a bank account. And I like it that way. For real, like the last time I signed up for Awanda, about an hour later, they called me like, hey, what's going on, Justin? I uh, just wanted to see if you were having any problems funding your account. And I was like, no, there's 10 grand on the way. Shut up. AOA. Uh, let's see. Let's go over to Coin Paprika and see if we can't find AOA. Aurora. Aurora Bitcoin. Hello. So let's go to the daily on Aurora and let's see where we're at. So we are above but trading below the baseline right now, just slightly. Uh, KST is bullish. Volume oscillator is bullish. MFI is bearish. I would deign toward MFI here because it's a better entry indicator, to be quite honest with you. Volume oscillator tells you there's a trade to be taken. This is actually would be giving you a short signal right now on the close of this kit. Volume is quite high. KST is about to cross, cross uh, under. Um, volume oscillator tells you that there's enough gas in the tank for a profitable trade. And MFI, which in this case would be your primary sig signal, KST is your exit, uh, would be telling you to go short. So Aurora does not look good. Now let's go look. You said in the short term. So let's go look at the four hour. Let's go see if there's a four hour trade there. Below the four hour baseline, so there's no trade to be taken. MFI is below the 50 line. Volume oscillator tells you there's a trade on the table. KST is about to cross up. Uh, no, nah, this isn't good, man. This isn't good. This is consolidating sideways. If we can get back above this line, then maybe we can have a pop up. Uh, I wouldn't take a trade based off of this, no, man. Uh, thank you, Irish girl. Uh, passive base says buy BNB.
Uh, which one site for trading Forex with crypto? Um, so I think you can trade certain pairs on Forex.com exchange, I think. And Awanda is supposed to be adding cryptocurrencies later. Uh, I know that they're working on it right now, actually. Um, now, you can use MetaTrader 4 to trade cryptocurrencies, but I don't really suggest it, to be honest with you. Uh, it's clunky as heck. Trading view is way better. <clears throat> Weiss upgraded Bitcoin to a B? Hell yeah. Uh, Cryptopic, Monero, BTC? Sure. That is a rough one. Uh, Monero is actually signaling a short on today's candle. Again, you want to be careful trading into highly fundamental news events like this Binance thing. Um, I would try to get in on a pullback for this. Let's even see if we'd be allowed. Let's see if it closed as it is now. Is this a short we would take? Uh, no, it's not because we're beyond the qualifying line. Price has moved too far. We now have an asymmetric risk to reward ratio. Uh, so let's see if we can get a pullback and then maybe we can take another short tomorrow. Let's see if we can get a pullback back within the boundary of our baseline and our qualifying line, and maybe there'll be a short trade tomorrow. But right now, there's nothing to do here, unless you're being a reversal trader, in which case. So let's just, you know, let's search for cracking. Now let's throw time transformation on there. Let's try using time transformation as a reversal indicator. So we got this on seven. Okay, bueno. Let's go down to the four-hour chart. Yeah, so time transformation not giving us a reversal on the four hour and not giving us a reversal on the 30 minute chart. So here's a buy on the 30 minute it just threw up and it threw up a buy over here on the 15 minute. You're pretty much at break even right now. And this is the problem with reversal trading because it gave you buys here. Who wants to sit through that? Hourly, throwing up an hourly reversal buy right here. Just because something's cheap doesn't make it a good buy. But that's how I trade, guys. I know that that's counterintuitive to a lot of people. Most people think that, oh, I buy when it's cheap and I sell when it's high. No, you sell when it's a pretty good price and you sell when it goes higher. Because when it's a pretty good price, it has a much better potential of going higher. That's my methodology. That's my theory. So, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't grab XMR, brother. Again, you know, some people might make some good money today by grabbing up a lot of these coins that have dipped and writing it back up. Best of luck with that. Did the tunes turn off? I feel like we haven't had music for like quite a while. That's weird. Well, it's cool. I brought it back. I brought it back toward the end. I was thinking of dumping my bag. All right, uh, let's see here. I can't give you any advice on that, man. That's a personal decision that's based off your strategy. You know, if you it depends on what your time frame is. If you're looking at Monero as an investment, that's one thing. If you're looking at it as a short-term trade, yeah. But when you approach the market to invest, you have to think a completely different way.
be honest with you, Phil, I'm not really doing much of anything. I think Bitcoin looks pretty good. Uh, there is a long at the close of the daily candle. Let's run Bitcoin through the same filters that we've been running through everything else. Volume oscillator is not good, meaning there's not a whole lot of gas in the tank. Minx did signal along here that we can now take today with one third reduced risk on our Bitcoin position. We are above the baseline. Wadatar is confirming today again, as I said. So this might, you know, depending on if you're using Wadatar and not using volume and you're not looking at volume at all, then that's a trade you take at one third reduced risk. But uh, you're pretty close then, Irish girl. So overall, Philip, I think Bitcoin looks good. And altcoins are hit and miss as they always are. I think altcoins are probably going to continue to take a bit of a dive over the next few days with interruptions of random pumps. So pretty much just regular. So I just continue to trade the system day in and day out. But I'll be going on vacation for the next few days. So Bitcoin long is not a position I'm going to be putting on. I'm going to be take the, taking this opportunity this evening uh, to exit my positions. Again, a lot of positions got stopped out at take profit one, or excuse me, at break even after hitting take profit one. Uh, only one trade hit its hard stop for me. And I'll be taking this opportunity tonight to pretty much go flat and waiting until Monday when I come back. Tom, crypto newbie, what's going on? Hmm. All right, guys. You know what? You guys have been real. You know what? I wonder why my music isn't continuing to play. But whatever. It's been a super fun day. It's been a super fun day. But listen, guys, I got a long trip ahead of me. I've got to publish this video. Uh, which platform is it? This is uh, TradingView. Uh, TradingView.com. I got a super long, long car ride ahead of me. Is it better than Trading? No, this is TradingView. <laughs> uh, Wally, man, thanks so much for the 10 bucks, my good friend. He says, Gunbot University only bans losers and trolls. Uh, troll losers. Long live botting and long live cracking cryptocurrency. Learn, earn, and don't get burned. Thank you so much, man. Huge shout out to you, my good dude. Shout out to Gunbot University and you as well, sir. Hopefully the bots are killing it in this volatility, man, as I know that they always do. All right, guys, well, listen, it's been fun. It's been awesome. We've lived, we've laughed, we've loved, we've cried. But I want to get this video pushed out for the premium members. I want to get the trading, uh, tra excuse me, trading view pine testing video uploaded for you guys. And I want to get hit in the road because I got a lot to do today. So love you guys so much. Let's head over to the main scene for a quick talk. Okay. Guys, one of the secrets to our success is using the correct tools for the job. It's not just the tools, it's the rules, and it's not just the rules, it's the tools. It's a comprehensive blend of doing things correctly and using the right tools to accomplish those. And one of the tools that I use is three commas. Uh, as I introduced in the last VIP AMA, I use three commas to trade on Binance and any other spot exchanges where I happen to be doing my business. And of course, that has been up until now, uh, Binance. Um, Binance, Deribit, Bybit, and BitMEX. So significantly going to be seeing a big increase uh, maybe over toward Bittrex, probably to Coinbase Pro. We already talked about doing Coinbase Pro. Now, Wabi and Bittrex kind of stand there for the acceptance of my capital. So I'll be keeping you guys updated on that. But one of the tools I use is three commas. And if you guys would like to use three commas, if you use my link, you can save some money off of your subscription. Of course, it's three commas dot cracking cryptocurrency dot com. That's three commas dot cracking cryptocurrency dot com saves you some money. And you can use the same tools that I use and all the other members of the group use as well to dominate the market. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, let me scroll down. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Breaking Bitcoin Market Update. Of course, I've been your host, Justin Wise, lead analyst and senior mentor at CrackingCryptocurrency.com. Are you often busy and do you often miss the live show? Well, you might want to check out the Breaking Bitcoin podcast. Scott has been hard at work and currently the release is in the beta rollout phase. 
you guys can head on over to breakingbitcoin.crackingcryptocurrency.com and see the current past shows. Uh, right now, we're on Google Music, and Google Podcast is now showing up if you search for Cracking Cryptocurrency. Uh, Scott's working on fixing the show title for Google Podcast to Breaking Bitcoin. Uh, we're currently on Stitcher, Spotify, and Podbean are all live and working with iTunes, iHeartRadio, and a few more coming as soon as they are approved. Uh, let us know if you have a favorite podcatcher you would like us to add to the show. Um, and otherwise, you may be able to manually add it in if you click on the RSS feed and try to add it manually on the Breaking Bitcoin show page. So, of course, that's breakingbitcoin.crackingcryptocurrency.com. Make sure to leave us a five-star review. Helps the show, and we really appreciate that. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, sarcastic remarks, and or death threats, make sure to leave them at the bottom in the comment section. If it's a good comment, I'll try to get back to you within 48 hours. It's probably going to be 72 hours now because I've got a long car ride ahead of me. Big shout out to our supporters. Shout out to Spectre Security Coin, X42, Zero Z, and MMO Coin. You guys are absolutely fantastic projects. I love you guys. And shout out to you guys, viewers, as well. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, give us a follow, and share us around to your family and friends, even people you don't like. And I will see you guys on Monday at noon. Trade safely throughout the weekend and don't get caught up in anything silly. There's lots of opportunities out there. And even though some of us might have had a bad day, position sizing properly and accepting correct risk and trading systematically with a proper structure are the keys to our success. I'll see you guys on Monday. Trade safely.